welcome to another video. Today I'm just going to introduce a video that uh, I filmed a few days ago with my good friend Mark at Cafe LA near Beaver Castle. Regular viewers will know it well, some of you I know will have been there. If not, make it a destination. It's a good ride around Beaver and you'll get a very nice coffee. So we thought we'd show you something that you wouldn't normally see unless you happen to be in a coffee shop before it opens at least and that is what we call dining in the machine setting it up ready to go and as with a lot of things coffee wise it's surprisingly geeky lots of checking and measuring lots of little things to be careful about so hope you enjoy this it's a little bit different bit of coffee content and i'll have some more coffee content coming over the next few weeks we've got a plan to show you a few more videos and uh, drop a comment below your favorite coffee i'm intrigued to know i shall drop in now the video that was shot a few days ago So good morning, I'm here with Mark at Cafe LA. Morning Paul, it's, morning everyone. It's been well, well before opening time. So what we thought we would do is show you something you're probably never gonna see normally, unless you're in a coffee shop before it opens. And that's the setup procedure that is really, really important in the mornings to set the coffee machine up. So, uh, so tell us then Mark, what do we actually do? Right, what do we do? Well, I suppose the first thing we do when we come in in the morning, Paul, is we actually physically turn the espresso machine on. Um, there's a, obviously a big boiler in there. It takes probably about 20 minutes to come up to temperature. Um, and then while that's doing, we set up the shop up. And that includes just filling the hoppers here and the grinders with yeah. coffee beans. Um, because every night, these hoppers get emptied and um, you know stored very carefully in an airtight container uh, in a cool place. So we're looking after our coffee. Um, and then once the coffee machine's turned on, we'll go through the process of, uh, I guess you call it dialing in the coffee. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all right. We we'll call it dialing in. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing we're dialing the coffee in is we, we have to do it every morning, but we'll actually do it through the day um, as well. And basically what we're trying to do is make sure the flavour of the coffee is just as good as it can be and as consistent as it can be. So uh, these beans here, this is our house blend, but we, we get this from uh, 200 degrees, they roast in Nottingham. Yeah, so obviously these group handles have been warming up in the machine, but 200 degrees will tell us, you know, how much uh, coffee um, by weight we should be uh, we should be grinding into the porter filter for brewing. Um, they'll tell us the volume of coffee we should be producing for a double espresso shop, uh, and they'll tell us how long it should take to brew that coffee. Um, so you know the parameters we're looking for is something around 16 grams of coffee to be ground uh, for each shot, uh, 27 seconds extraction time, um, because if you go under that time, the coffee's under extracted, you don't get all of the flavor, but if you go over, the coffee can start to taste bitter um, and you'll notice it, so that's what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, but there are variables there that we, we need to sort of fine tune as, as we dial in in the morning. Um, so shall I show you the coffee yeah, grinder? Yeah, show us a coffee grinder. Yeah. Right, this is our grinder, and, and it's a beautiful grinder. It's a nice one, uh, but it's quite a dumb thing. Um, it only knows two things: um, how fine or coarse to grind the coffee for, and how long it's going to grind it for. Um, so we adjust how fine or coarse the grind is on this little knurled wheel here, um, and then this screen is telling us how many seconds it's going to be grinding for. Um, and this is an on-demand grinder, um, so it's grinding the coffee specifically and just for an individual drink. It is quite a precise measurement. I mean, it's the same grinder as I used to have, and it's quite a precise measurement in the tenths of a second even, isn't it? Tenths of a second, because yeah. you all know, Paul, like with coffee, tiny adjustments make a big mm -hmm. difference. You know, it is very fine. We're looking at tenths of a gram here, tenths of a second here, you know, but they can make a big difference to the flavour of the coffee, mm -hmm. like you say. Um, and the other thing that, that is important that you know, a, a bit of more of an old school grinder might have a chamber here that you grind a set amount of coffee into and then just dose into for the individual drink. But like you say, this one's a bit more precise and the coffee's super fresh because the second coffee's exposed to air, it starts to degrade. So really what, what we're doing now is setting it up to be consistent during the day, isn't it? Exactly it's the consistency that. that's key. Right, so we're just gonna grind the, uh, the beans for this shot. As I say, it's going to grind for about 8.8 .8 seconds, and then we can see what weight of coffee we've got when we've, uh, when we've ground that. Okay, so let's pop this on the scales here, which we'd zeroed earlier. 
Okay, so 16.7 grams, 16.6. Yeah, that's pretty much within tolerance, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's that's right. pretty good. And we've yeah. got a bit of margin to play with there. So if I tamp the coffee now, and here we're just squeezing the air out of the coffee bed. Um, and I'm also just looking to make sure it's nice and even and level in the portafilter, which it is. Bless the coffee, so we just take the grinds off the top it's there. It's a great term, that, blessing the coffee, I love that, it? I love that term. Just make sure we've got a good seal on the machine when the group handle goes in. And now we're going to start our shot of espresso and I'm going to time to see how long it takes to come through. Okay, straight away, I'm thinking that's not too bad actually. It's starting to come out fairly evenly from both sides. We're also looking for the coffee to just be sort of curving inwards. Can you see that? It's just yeah. starting to do that now. They can call that the rat's tail effect, and the coffee will change the colour as it goes through the brewing process. Okay, and I'm thinking it's just taking slightly longer than it should, perhaps, but we'll, the stopwatch will tell us. Actually, do you know what? That oh, was pretty much bad, bang yeah. on. Yeah, pretty much seconds, bang on. Yeah. So, um, but this is where we would fine tune it, and not only first thing in the morning. So. The, the machine is programmed, the only variable that's fixed really, if you think about the three variables being the weight of coffee that goes, this is ground into the porter filter, the volume of liquid that's produced by the machine for a double shot of espresso and the time it takes to brew it, the one variable that's fixed is the volume of coffee that's mm. produced by the machine because the, the machine's programmed to do that, right? The other two variables we, we, we can adjust a little bit. So if that had taken a lot longer than 27 seconds to come through, then I'd have probably gone a little bit more coarse on the grind, right? Because if you think of coffee when it's ground as sort of almost grains of sand. Yeah, so like the, sand versus pebbles in a bucket, isn't exactly it? Exactly that, yeah. exactly yeah. that. So if you go coarser, the grains of coffee get bigger. So it's easier for the machine to force water through that path of bigger grains of coffee. Um, if you think the, the water's coming through at nine bar, I mean, the pressure's immense, right? It's like about 120, 130 PSI. Yeah. So it's, it's immense pressure. Versus if the coffee was coming through too quickly, I'd go finer on the grind, you know, so, so it's, there's more resistance and, and it takes longer for the coffee. The, co the water's in contact with the coffee and brewing for longer. And I used to find that um, because I had the ovens immediately behind me, yeah. I had quite a lot of humidity. Right. So you've got to be really conscious of it changing during the day. And I know we would, would do that during the day. A lot of totally. coffee shops won't because uh, it is time consuming. But I know yeah. it is important for you, isn't it? It is important for yeah. us. It is. You, you're right, because you're right. We'll do this first thing in the morning. But as the temperature and the humidity changes, just as you say, you know, we'll literally have the stopwatch here mm. on, the, on, the, on the counter and we'll be timing shots through the day and making adjustments. Because the other thing you've got to adjust, right, let's say you go um, to, to, to a more fine grind, right, what's going to happen then though, for your 8.8 .8 seconds, say, you'll get less weight, right, because yeah. it's grinding uh, finer particles that weigh less. So if you, go, uh, if you go more fine on the grind, you might have to uh, compensate by increasing the time that you're grinding for. So there's that interplay that you're looking at all the time. You know, and you also, can't just adjust one I mean, variable. I used to find as well that because it's a natural product coffee, it's not 100% consistent. Right. So you can get a variation even in the beans, can't totally. you? But, but you know, during the day or during the batch, that will make a difference. Totally right. I mean, 200 degrees are really super consistent. Mm. But even they, sometimes you're right. You're, you know, we know what date um, each mm. bag of coffee is roasted on. And I will consciously be looking when we change to a different roast date. You might find a slight variation mm. that we'll have to fine tune. But you're spot on, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. look at the coffee coming through. Sometimes we'll just know straight away, that doesn't look to be enough coffee in the basket, looks to be coming through a little bit more quickly than it should, and we'll just make some adjustments on the fly. So a barista that's really looking after the products and really being consistent is going to be taking these measurements during the day. And we, we've spoken many times, Mark, about our sort of joint share of, of geekiness in coffee. Right. But it is, it is really important to measure those numbers. It's all about the numbers, isn't it? It is, it is, because the, the roasters, you know, a good roaster will know exactly what numbers are going to deliver the flavour for that coffee. And, and your consistency point is bang on, right? You know, you and I know, Paul, we, we will cycle to the cafes that we know care. Right, and we know they take the trouble and the time over this. And there are those out there that do like us, and you know we, we could name some others. But the consistency points everything, because actually, you're paying a fair amount of money for a cup of coffee, and it's pointless getting outstanding coffee from Cafe LA one day when Esme's on the machine, and the next day I'm on the machine and it's somewhat different. You know, that's absolutely, it's not acceptable. You're paying too much money for that. No. So, you know, we will, yes, we'll take these measurements often through the day, um, just to your point, but we'll also make sure like nobody goes on this machine until they've been trained in all this because you need to understand your machine, you need to understand your coffee to do it justice and that's what we're all about.
And it definitely is a craft, isn't it? You know, the whole thing of producing a really good coffee is not just a case of pressing a button. I wish with, it was. With this type of machine. I wish it was, yeah. but it, it isn't. And, but that's, to your point earlier, that's mm. where the, the satisfaction comes in, you know, and that's from everything from getting, obviously this double espresso shot here, that's the basis of every drink we serve. Coffee wise, you know, whether it's a flat white or a cafe latte, there's a double espresso at the, at the foundation of it. So this has got to be right. Um, but yeah, you know, it's super important to us. One of my pet hates and something to watch for, when you, if you can see the coffee machine from a distance, have a look at the steam ones. As you can see, marks are absolutely immaculate. How old is this machine now? Yeah, it's uh, about 18 months old. About 18 months, and you see they're, they're properly clean, absolutely immaculate. If you go in somewhere and you see lots of milk all congealed around there, I suggest you have a black Americana. <laughs> um, I mean, we are we are quite geeky, Mark, aren't we? Yeah, we, I think it brings that side of us out yeah. a little bit, Paul. You and know. I know, I know, one of my pet hates is going in, and you can see when the machine's dirty. And equally, certain coffee shops I go to, you don't get the same consistency. You can have a right. quite a nice coffee one day, right. and not the next time you go there. Yeah, and totally. I think the process we've just gone through. Yeah. I think is one of the most important parts of your base, isn't it? Huge part of yeah. it, because you've got to understand your machine and your coffee. And you, you know, you helped us actually a lot with that with that when when we first got this. Equipment. Yeah, that's right, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and I thank you for that. And then, then gradually, you really get to know the kit and, and work well mm. with it, and you get to know your coffee as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, but, but the consistency point, like it's everything. The because people are paying a reasonable sum for the coffee. Now, I think that reasonable sum is like tremendous value if every the time they come here. Mm. It's good, you know, even if we're busy and we're flat out, and sometimes it's like, you know, constant and the pressure's there, you can't let the standards slip, and we, no. we can't let someone on the machine until they're like properly trained and qualified to do it, because it's a skilled job. Yeah, it's I think really as well, I, mean, I know um, many moons ago, in my coffee shop, if I had a quiet afternoon, maybe some of the regular customers, uh, I'd let them have a go on the machine. Right. And almost without exception, they go, oh, it's a lot harder than it looks, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And it, yeah. is, it is a skilled job, it's, it's not really just hard. pressing a button. No, it's really um, hard. And then yeah. I, I, I can say hand on heart, I, I've only got hopefully reasonable at it very re recently in terms of like dealing with the pressure and, and optimizing every order that comes mm. in. You know, you'll look at a ticket of drinks, or Esme will now, or, or Dahlia in the shop, and you know, we'll, we'll make drinks in a certain order, you know, and read several, several orders ahead to make sure we're sort of never sacrificing quality, but there can't be a dead second. You know, like you saw, while the coffee grinder's grinding, that's nine seconds, we could yeah. be pouring the milk in the yeah, jug yeah. or rinsing yeah. the jug out or, yeah. you know, there's never a dead second. No. I mean, just... broadly, even working flat out, I, will, I would have in my head, it's a minute to drink. Yeah. Even, it can't be any less than that. Right. Because right. by the time you've ground the coffee, yeah. you've steamed the milk, you've let it pour through for 30 seconds, however much you've got going on, right. it's still a minute a drink. Exactly. Isn't it? As soon as it involves milk, it's a minute to drink. With, with the best will in the world, yeah. yeah you, can, you, can, you can only speed up the process so long. Yeah. I can't get an espresso shot through that machine faster mm. than 27 seconds without compromising the, the quality. Right. And we won't do that. We just won't. The same on the van, you know, it's exactly the same. So, yeah, I think p people, how can I put it? Sometimes, yeah, they'll wait a few minutes for the, mm. for, the, for the drink if there's a long queue. When they get it though, they absolutely understand it and, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll keep coming back if we keep getting it right. It's worth it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think uh, from my point of view, um, I got into a coffee and a coffee shops just by getting more and more geeky. I imagine right. like, you would be the same, you yeah, know, yeah. both of us now, I know when we go other places, yeah. we're always looking at what's happening with the machine or what right. the setup is. And exactly, to, yeah. the, to the extent that we, we as cyclists as well, we'll know which cafes care, yes. you know, and get it right consistently. And we'll keep going back there because you, you know you know the ones to go to because they do care mm. and you know or, or if you do get a good coffee if i get a good coffee i'll always compliment the barista or say thank you because I, I know what's involved mm. i really appreciate it when i find it but it's hard to find yeah it is it's it, and it's hard to find consistently for, right. for sure so that's a bit of a quick a quick guide this morning on how to what happens um in a coffee shop maybe you will never ever see that setup unless you're in a coffee shop before the open you're never going to see that and it's a, it's a good example of one of the small factors, which is why your coffee um, is not 50 pence for a coffee, because it is a craftsman made thing. Spot so, on. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Okay. So I got my flat white. That'll see me home, won't it? The sun's coming out. 
I think it's going to be a very nice day today. So I shall go off later on my bike, I feel. So a uh, different video today, not on the bike. We'll be later, I might add some in for some footage later. But um, I shall see you again in a few days time. Hope you enjoyed a bit of coffee content for a change and maybe you'll understand a little bit more about what's involved behind the scenes in a coffee shop. Um, and when most people see it, they're quite surprised how much geekiness there is involved. And it does make the difference in the coffee for certain. Well, it's a glorious day for a ride today. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, a little bit different. As you can see, Mark is a true coffee geek. Um, when we very first met, it was about two and a half years ago. Um, yeah, a little bit longer maybe. And it was a uh, atrociously wet day. And uh, he came into CVV that I owned at the time and we had a really long chat and we found that instantly, we, we shared a lot of qualities about coffee, a lot of things that we both liked. And it's quite nice to find somebody um, that also understands coffee and coffee culture and the serving of coffee and what's important. And we, we definitely, um, over the years that I had the coffee shop, we shared a lot of information. Uh, we weren't all that far apart, but we were very much friends rather than competitors. And we shared and helped each other, help each other out quite regularly and still do. So uh, thanks to Mark for helping with the filming of that and giving us a guide. And uh, yep, hopefully see you again in a few days time and we'll do some more coffee content over the next few weeks. Don't forget to click the bell, like and subscribe. See you in a few days. Bye. Bye.